Hi, this is Dr. Alemi with the solution for the assignment uh, for uh, finding the relationship between infections and diabetes. We start with uh, the use command. The use command names the database that should be uh, referenced in all of the SQL code that follows. In, in my database, it's called DX. Your database probably has a different name, and you should use the, the name that you have given to the database. I'm going to describe the procedure for solving this question in three steps. In step one, we calculate a new variable for infections and diabetes, and this requires a lot of coding. But essentially, it's a, a check on uh, variables and creation of the variables. Then in step two, we calculate how many repeated infections are occurring using the rank function. And in step three, we calculate the likelihood ratios associated with each of the repeated functions, infections. This is the step one. We, we are calculating new variables for infections and diabetes. Uh, we are calculating this from a table called dbo.final. dbo means that it's a permanent table, and final is a name that the table has in my database, and your database is likely to have a different name. This, uh, this portion of the code starts with two replace, uh, two if commands, really, in which we check uh, for whether the patient has diabetes or infections. And I'm going to go through each one of these if commands in a little bit more depth. So the first uh, if command is for diabetes, and it starts with a re replacing the period inside the ICD-9 code. That period is not in the CCS codes and therefore should be replaced with nothing so that they can be matched. In this if command, the operator is an in function. An in function tests if the value on the left is part of a set of values. And here we see a, a long set of values that the codes might match. To put these values on, in your SQL code, I have separately created a video for you so that you can quickly do so. You may want to check that video before you actually hand code this. The if command assigns a 1 when the patient has any one of these codes and a 0 otherwise. The same kind of if command is occurs for an infection where we check to see if the ICD-9 codes matches any infection codes. Again, the shortcut on creating these infection codes is provided in a separate video. In order to run a very long SQL code, the best approach is to click on the plus sign, on the negative sign or the plus sign. When you, when you see the plus sign, it, it summarizes all of the lines into one line. As you can see here, that we have three dots indicating that there is a lot of other lines below it, so we can easily execute this portion of the code. When we execute, we have about 17 million rows of data. We may want to take a look at the first five of the rows of the data. Here is an example of some of the data. And you can see that diabetes and infections are two last columns in this data. And the patient has either a 0 or a 1 next to it for each one of the ICD-9 codes. Now we go to step two, where we are going to calculate the repeated infections. In order to do so, we use a dense rank function. 
A dense rank function has a particular, it differs from rank function by the fact that if two, if two diagnoses occur at the same time, it will give it the same rank order. So if, it, if you have 10 diagnoses occur, 10 hospital diagnoses occurring in the same hospitalization, it will always give the rank order of that hospitalization. It doesn't matter if you have two infections or three infections in that hospitalization. So we are telling it to dense rank over uh, the patient ID and whether he is infected. And we want it ordered by the age at that, of that diagnosis. Uh, the partition is over the patient ID so that we are looking to see the count of the infections for each person. Notice that the, there is an if statement that this rank, dense rank function is embedded in. And this if statement says that if the person has no infection, then we should assign it a, the repeated infection as zero. The data looks like this. You see here we start, we are looking at the case for eight, 828, 463 ID. We start, there is lots of zeros, and then towards the end we see that the patient has a one repeated infection and then two, several two repeated infections because those all those twos are occurring in the same hospitalization and a three. So this patient has had three repeated infections. The next step is to calculate the likelihood ratio, and this is done in in really three sub steps. In the first step, we calculate the calculate the infected diabetic cases, and we do so by uh, counting the first of all grouping by repeated infection, and then restricting it to only diabetic patients. We also do the same thing and count the number of infected non-diabetic patients and we do so by restricting it to non-diabetic patients and grouping it by repeated infections. Then we are ready to calculate the likelihood ratio. In order to calculate likelihood ratio, we need to have the total diabetic and total non-diabetic patients. And we are doing so here by creating the at diabetic constant. And this is calculated, you see in parentheses, from uh, select count distinct ID from data to temporary file where diabetes is, patients are diabetes. So we are counting every case that the patient is diabetic. The same occurs for non-diabetic total, and we are counting that with the where command where diabetes is zero. The calculation of the likelihood ratio has to have a particular uh, bent to it, because if we can't divide by zero and we can't multiply by zero. So if infected diabetics is null, so that means that it's zero. We calculate it as one over infected non-diabetics plus one. So in this case, infected non-diabetics is all of the patients. So we are saying that it, the likelihood ratio would be one over all of the patients plus one. If infected non-diabetic patients is null, that's the situation where no, no, no di non-diabetic patients were identified, then the infected diabetic, the likelihood ratio is calculated as infected diabetic plus one. And it, otherwise, the likelihood ratio is calculated as infected diabetics divided by the total number of diabetics and infected non-diabetics divided by the total number of non-diabetics. Notice that we are doing a full join, not an inner join. A full join allows us to assign a null value when uh, one of the 
tables has no value for that uh, repeated infection. Here is what the data, final data set looks like. This data has to be copied in, into Excel and plotted. And uh, to copy it, you click, right click on the corner where you see a box right above one and, and uh, it gives you an option to copy and paste it into Excel. Then you can plot it inside Excel. This is the image of the final results. As we can see here, it tells us that the likelihood ratio f literally is very uh, little uh, for having diabetes. And at most, uh, when you have almost 25 infections, you reduce the chances of having a diabetic hospitalization by half. So infections, repeated infections and diabetes seem to occur, not occur together at all. And if you have infection, it doesn't imply that you will have diabetes. So remember to submit the code and the graph in a Word document inside Blackboard.